Welcome to Connecting the Dots, a non-traditional legal program with your host and trusted advisor, Elizabeth Miska, your guide through the web of life's dilemmas. Welcome to another edition of Connecting the Dots. I'm your host, Liz Miska. And today I have someone who I think is going to become a good friend (laughs) and is going to teach all of us, including myself, about travel training. Karen, um, welcome, and could you introduce yourself formally? Well, thank you so much for having me today, Liz. My name is Karen Anderson Walsh, and I'm the travel trainer and the community outreach liaison for the Worcester Regional Transit Authority, the WRTA. The bus. The bus. <laughs> and some people call me the bus lady. Oh, okay. So I answer to that and title as well. So what's travel training? Travel training is a wonderful program. It's here at the WRTA, and it shows anyone 13 and above how to use the bus Uh, either uh, from one destination to another or use the whole WRTA bus system with knowledge and confidence and for many people with the goal of independent travel. I'm just thinking when I was a little girl, I grew up in Holden uh, and I had a friend whose mom didn't drive. So we felt like we were we were big girls, and we would. This was before I could drive, which I no longer can do. But that's a different story. Um, we felt like we were big girls. We you know we took the bus, so it was kind of exotic, but it was also kind of, I don't know. It's like we didn't know what we were doing. So does travel training teach you, uh, you know, like how to feel comfortable <laughs> and tips and tricks? You, you hit upon something very important, and that word is comfortable. I would say 99% of the more than 100 to 200 people I've travel trained, individuals, uh, the number one thing they tell me is, I haven't been on a bus since grade school, and I'm a little nervous about it. So part of my job is to Uh, show people how to take the bus so they feel confident, knowledgeable, and relaxed. And there's so many services that the WRT offers to help our riders. We have a customer service program uh, that people can call into. We have our customer service window on the first floor of the WRTA hub. And we have different access for people in different languages. They can come in and they can choose their language from a card. And we work with Language Bank, and the Language Bank will, uh, will have them directly in touch with someone who speaks their native language. So we like to speak their language as well as be their wheels. Hmm. So typically, how, do, other than uh, you know, social media now, I suppose, but publicity, how would someone find out about travel training? And say I'm a recently arrived Afghani immigrant. Um, how, how, you know, how, how would I, how would I find out about this? I don't speak the language. I don't know the environment. How would I find out? Well, I get most of my referrals for travel trainees and organizations through agencies. So there, there are many agencies such as the Centria Care Alliance, and they work with resettlement for new Americans coming in. So I get a lot of referrals from them. Uh, The Warm Association in Worcester helps new immigrants coming in. Uh, There are many people who come to our customer service window and they're directed to me. We have a wonderful website and what's great about our website is that when you get on it, there is a language portal. So you can access the language portal and the pages will be translated for you. Uh, We have about 14 languages right now it's offered in. So in addition to the WRTA building uh, and our website, we also have a portal on our website where you can go to the travel training portal and get to me. And I'll get the message that you're either looking for specific transportation or you'd like to start and figure out how to use the bus. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, again, given my experience when, you know, I was 13 or 14 years old and had never ridden the bus, um, are people uh, receptive to riding the bus? Are, they, are, are there safety concerns for themselves 
Um, can you give us some examples of some uh, feel-good stories that, that, and, and triumphs that you've had when people might have had uh, trepidation about, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm afraid I'm going to you know, get off at the wrong stop and, and, and be accosted or, <laughs> and, and not, you know, not, not, not know what to do because of whatever, whatever yeah. communication barriers or whatever. Well, s some of us know the story of a Charlie on the MBTA, <laughs> he will never return. Thus, I think the Charlie card was named after him. Yes. That is the nightmare most people have is they will get on public transit and then mysteriously go round and round forever without <laughs> knowing how to get on and off. So this is, this is a, kind of the, the comedic end of the fear that people have. So the number one concern that I have and that when I'm working with my folks is safety. And that's the number one concern we have at the WRTA. So before I even get anyone on a bus, I sit here as you and I are talking, and I talk about their life. Have they ever had experience with public transit? Uh, where are they from? Uh, what would they like to do uh, getting on a bus? Uh, when was uh, an experience maybe when they were lost, and how did they deal with it? So it's not just a conversation about their goals in travel training, but it's an initial assessment, and that assessment covers how do they process information? How do they communicate? How do they uh, deal with anxiety in public? Uh, do they have any issues they wish to disclose in their health that might affect how we get on the bus together? Because I travel train with them on the bus. And so I need to know, uh, is there a situation where they would not be safe? Is there a situation where they would be safer? And then the final thing I assess them for is their mobility. How do they move? What is their gait? What is their pace? Do they use a device when they're walking? Uh, do they ambulate with a wheelchair, with a cane, uh, with a walker? And I get a sense of, of their, their sensory needs. Mm -hmm. uh, do they use a, a companion when they're walking? And I, I need to let you know very much so that we are very excited to be working with the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind and the Massachusetts Commission for the Hard of Hearing. And I never travel alone, travel train alone, without someone from one of these commissions uh, advising me, really being my right-hand person to travel train with these individuals. So before I get anyone on the bus, I do that research, and then I see where they'd like to go and I will walk the walk. So I'll walk from their home to the bus stop and I'll look at the condition of the sidewalk. How long does it take to get to that bus stop? Is there another way to get to that bus stop that might be safer for them according to their needs? And is this something they could do alone or is this something maybe that they would need a family member to go with them for whatever reasons? So that's the first step there. And then I uh, go and look at the buses and the bus routes, and I choose the most efficient and safe route that will meet their needs. So say that they are very agile, they have experience in public transportation, they can just go from A to Z in our fastest route. But say there's someone who has an issue with vision or an issue with mobility, I may have them take another route to another bus stop that may take them a little longer, but I know they'll get to their destination safer. And so there's a lot of background work, backstage work, before I get to the individual on the bus. Do you get people, thank you, that, that was very helpful, oh, because you. I'm just thinking uh, that people often express dismay that they can't go places, but then I think they're stopped in their tracks by the fear that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to ride in public, so to speak. I, you know, I want to, I want to have a private um, vehicular experience <laughs> as opposed to a communal um, yes. vehicular experience because I don't know who else is on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, and I, I'm just thinking, do can you tell us some success stories of someone who 
you had to coax, <laughs> perhaps is the best <laughs> word, um, that was, a ch was, was challenged and was challenging for you, but then there, there, was, uh, there was a breakthrough, and now that person um, could be considered and, and does consider themselves, uh, you know, a transit rider. Oh, Liz, that's the heart of everything I do and, and every, the best part of, of my job. And I, I wish we had another hour because I could fill that hour with, with some wonderful stories. There's a, a many people I work with come to Worcester. They're new Americans or they're new to Worcester because they have gone through a substance recovery or they've gone through, they've come back into community after uh, being incarcerated, or they're just new to the area, or they're frightened because all of a sudden they can't drive anymore. Right. Their license has been taken away because they may have a challenge uh, going on with their health, or they may have aged out of being able to drive safely. So they're literally sitting at home and looking out the window. So someone will come and rescue them and say, oh, there's a travel trainer, come work with her. And I'd love to work with these individuals. There was a young lady who was terrified to cross streets and she was really a prisoner in her own home. So we worked for over a year together to practice crossing streets and we started small. And that's what travel training is all about, is getting a program that, fix, that fits that individual and I work with trauma-informed in train, uh, training uh, required people, as well as people with all kinds of issues. They might have an anxiety issue. So a disability is not just what we can see from the outside. Very often it's someone who's traumatized. So they're working with that as well. So getting someone to be relaxed in community, to cross the street, for example, so we worked for over a year together and we started walking in an abandoned parking lot between the lines, going from line to line. And how do you feel and what's your pace of walking? And we practiced and practiced. And so what I do when I travel train is something kind of fun called shadowing. So when my individuals are ready to ride the bus independently, and I see that they're safe to do so. And then what they'll say to me, Liz, is, Karen, please, can you let me try this alone? Oh, really? I'm surprised <laughs> that they want, they, yes. that, yeah, that they, they're feeling that, that confident. <laughs> yes. So I will shadow them, which means I'll be on the back of the bus, or sometimes I'll follow the bus in the car. And I let oh. the driver know the bus ahead of time. Right, right. There's no stranger following you yeah. and threatening your life. It's just me, it's Karen. So I'll shadow them. And then if they need help, they can turn around and I'm right there. Otherwise, they have that confidence. So often I've got to be the tough teacher and say, you can do this. Yeah. You, you can ride the bus from point one to two, and I'll meet you right at the WRTA hub. And our bus drivers are wonderful. So they are one of the biggest gifts we have at the WRTA. And so I will work with my individuals and they'll often get to know the driver. And so I'll say to the driver, oh, my, my friend here, he's gonna ride the bus alone for the first time next week and he can't wait. So he's gonna ride the bus at this time on this route. And the bus driver has their job to do, but they will look out for this person. And I'll get on the bus and they'll say to me, you know, your friend was here the other day and he did a <laughs> magnificent job. And so it, it's a wonderful follow through and, and I just love it. That's the best thing when this individual gets out and they tell me, Karen, I took the bus to the Genesis Club today <laughs> or I took All the by bus myself. to my job by myself. by myself. And, you know, one gentleman said, I finally was able to go on a date because I could meet my lady friend oh. at the hub and we went to the movies and we had a wonderful time. And so these are all little victories that are of immense proportions. Absolutely. Very, very exciting. And they, they put me floating in there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> your, your stories just remind me of when I started losing my sight and learned how to use the cane and the instructor is called the mobility instructor. And uh, the trick though was 
I was blindfolded, uh, you know, so, uh, um, and he would be, again, I, I don't, I don't want to derail the, the, the conversation here, but we went over to Worcester State um, University and we were in the auditorium, I don't know if you're familiar, but the auditorium like mm -hmm. snakes through the, you know, and, and so it's, everything is, um, is joined, so you're not outside, and this was in December. Um, and so we walked it without, with, with him guiding me, and then he blindfolded me. He took me back to the beginning, and he told me that, um, you know, I want you to meet me at the psychology room on the second floor, which meant I had to go upstairs and everything like that. Well, I got all turned around, and I knew he was, I knew he was behind me. <laughs> you know, I knew he was there, but, but he was not going to break character. And, you know, and I'm, I'm banging up against lockers, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm feeling very, very frustrated. But he needed me, he, he needed me to um, understand that, yes, you can do it yourself. And, you know, I'm not going to come to your rescue. So I'm just wondering, I'm prefacing this, do you have instances where people, they, they think, now I'm good on my own, and then there's a hiccup, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I failed! I, you know, I, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a failure because." Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness! I have a sign that that was given to me um, by uh, Nikki Coppell, who runs a wonderful program at Summit Campus and Summit Academy, and that's a program for people who are neurodivergent, who are in the Worcester area getting their education and they work very hard to to gain skills so she gave me this quote and it's a sign I see every day and it says progress is not linear mm -hmm. I think that's it in a nutshell so one young lady I was working with she was struggling with crosswalks and crossing the street so I let her know that I was going to shadow her that I would be uh, with her by phone Mm -hmm. So what she didn't know is I was right in back of her, three feet in back of her, in a one-way glass door. And I could see her, but she couldn't see me. And so she froze. Mm -hmm. She just got frightened and couldn't move. And she said on her phone, and we were talking on the phone, I said, you know you can do this. And we rehearsed what she would do. And she did it. And I had my hand on that doorknob, and it was just, I don't think I was able to get it off the doorknob for a while, because I was ready to spring into action if she needed me. <laughs> yes. Well, again, you, it, it's, it's, you have to be convinced you can do it yourself. And I think, speaking as a person with a disability, you, you start doubting yourself. You start saying, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, you just cross that off the list. <laughs> Um, but then when, when you are surrounded by, and I, I, I want to um, hone in on your teaching ability because that's what I felt my mobility instructor was. He was, he was teach, actually he trained to be a teacher. <laughs> and, um, and then there was an incident where he was student teaching and the cooperating teacher got ill at the end of the year and he had been with the class, my instructor had been with the class the entire year. Well, th he those kids ate him alive. <laughs> they ate him alive. And, and he was like, I can't become a biology teacher. So there happened to be a, a, a poster on the wall. He went to Springfield College that talked about um, working with the blind. And, uh, and he thought, well, I could do one-on-one. -on -one <laughs> <You know, I, laughs> so, so that's how he became a mobility instructor. But again, I want to just jump back to the emphasis was he was a great teacher and he was patient. But he didn't do it for you, um, and he had expectations that you know. Again, he, he when he told me, and this is you know, 16 years ago when I had a, a lot more sight. He's like, I'm going to blindfold you, and I'm like, what? You're going to take away what you know, what little I have? And he's like, no, I'm wow. going to convince you that you can do it because you don't think you can do it. <laughs> so that's what I hear. That's what I hear you you in essence saying, Karen, that. You people come, people are referred to you, and they think, I can't do it. <laughs> and yes, then, <laughs> yes, I hear that so often, so often. And there's a, a young woman I'm working with who has uh, a degenerative physical condition. 
So I'm working with her and with permission, um, she discloses her results from her medical diagnosis. And she knows that, as with you, her condition is transcending. Mm -hmm. So she has given me the information to help her prepare for future steps. Right. Uh, and she can have her mobility, she can get into community uh, through these, these different uh, accommodations. So teachers, teachers run back in our family for generations. Yeah. And my parents were both teachers in different ways. My father started the physics department undergraduate at Clark University. Wow. And um, <laughs> even when he had dementia, he could recognize his students from decades ago, just when they came to visit him. And my mother was a teacher in a different way. Uh, she worked for a program that now has transcended to Seven Hills. And she taught people, families, how to advocate for the rights of their Down syndrome individuals, and also for people who were adopted for their rights as well. So she was a teacher. And many times she taught people, you can do that, being a self-advocate. So mm -hmm. a teacher is very much, as you know, and well said, is a self-advocate for that individual to work on their own and complete their personal goals. So I do come from a teaching background. I have a teaching certificate, and um, when I got my degree, the first thing I did is I went overseas, and I worked with individuals who were coming into Denmark, and they were new citizens, and they couldn't communicate, and they were trying to fit into a culture that was totally different in a time when this was not something that people did very often. So we started a theater troupe, and we did puppetry, and we did nonverbal activities and learned how to resettle into this community. And uh, people say, well, how did you learn so much about the bus? <laughs> well, I have my own bus story, too. I, I have this bus story of when I was in Denmark, and I said, I can get on the city bus. I don't know a word of Danish, but hey, I'm going to try it. So I, I showed the, the driver the card. Yep, he nodded. Off we went. So five minutes later, ten minutes later, half an hour later, at the end of the line, I'm dropped off. I'm in a field. I'm in a field in front of the ocean. I, don't, I have no idea. There are no human beings around. And it starts pouring rain. And the, 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 everything's mud. So I said, okay, this is a chance to practice wayfinding. <laughs> So there I went, finding my way back into the village. So that, that was my uh, information your, here. Your adoption, your, yes. you know, <laughs> baptism by fire, baptism or by water. by rain. <laughs> exactly. Said. Yeah. But that didn't deter you. Obviously, no. it made you more inquisitive. It does, and it gave me that empathy for people who are getting on the bus for the first time. Right. And um, I, I have a funny story. Uh, when I was in kindergarten, it, for a small period of time, people who were coming to the school took the city bus. So I was a little girl in kindergarten. I had my little bus ticket. And um, I decided that I wanted to go to Den Homes because they had escalators. <laughs> yes. First store to have escalators. So I told my best friend we were boarding the city bus. I said, please tell my mother, I'm just going to go window <laughs> shopping down in Den Homes. So there I was on the city bus, very, very short, yeah. and because I was five or six, five years old, and I took the bus downtown. It was the, it was the Worcester uh, city bus. And I got down to, to Den Homes, and nobody said a thing. And I was going to put my dime into the payphone and tell my mother, I'm ready to come home now. Well, I couldn't reach the payphone, <laughs> so there was a young uh, lady who worked in the store and she helped me. So I've always felt drawn to transportation. Wow. And I was on a plane for the first time a few months later when I was six years old because my parents said, well, we've got to feed this traveling bug, just keep her wow. on the road, keep wow. her going, wow. you know? So I've, I've always loved to travel and I've always loved to get people onto that bus and then have them be able to go off and take a part in this, this city. There's so much to offer now in Worcester. Yes. 
So we have buses that go to Webster, Southbridge, Dudley, way out, Leicester. People would be really surprised. So get onto our website, everyone, and go to uh, the rta.com and you can see our service area is huge and people come into Worcester and there's so much to do now downtown uh, the BID which is the the Worcester Business um, District Improvement uh, Association they have some wonderful people who are working on events downtown so we have out to lunch on Thursdays in the summer we have movies Lots of things for people to do downtown, and we've got the buses to bring people down here. Uh, many of our bus routes, you can get off at City Hall, you don't have to go all the way down to the WRTA Central Hub at 60 Foster Street. So I love to see my trainees on the bus, and they'll wave, and I'll wave <laughs> to them, and it's wonderful, and they're often coming downtown to uh, recreate and have some fun, not just for jobs. Wow. I, again, I, when, you, when you made the reference to Denholm, that was where uh, my, my friend, I, I, I told you that I grew up in Holden, yes. and my friend Patty, mom didn't drive, so we took the bus from Holden mm -hmm. to go to Denholm <laughs> and to have lunch <laughs> in, the, in the, like, the little cafe in, in the basement, and we felt that we were just like the bee's knees. We were, you know, like we were so important, you know, because we got to, you know, we were we were big girls. We got to ride the bus, but I was fourteen. I wasn't. I wasn't five, <laughs> Karen. So I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Um, we're running short on time. Um, any uh, if if people say there was a, a a viewer here who was an elderly person who was a shut in and said, you know what, I would like to 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 go to the Blackstone, the village is a Blackstone. I would like to to go to Target or uh, mm -hmm. uh, how, how would how would you suggest that you go about that? Well, they can contact me even by phone. They can just call the WRTA and call customer service and they'll send me the message and I can meet them at their home, outside of their home, and I can just uh, meet them at a coffee shop or the Worcester Senior Center is wonderful. I meet a lot of my trainees there or if people are comfortable going to any of our public libraries, I'll go there and meet them and we'll uh, address uh, whatever they'd like to do. We'll get them on the bus and get them going out and, and get their life adventures started here. Well, that's a, that's a really good segue because after, after we conclude this program, you are going to get to um, experience uh, crossing streets and, <laughs> and going to places like City Hall and the Thumbs library up. under blindfold and being guided. So, so you would you would alluded to before. You know, we could take an hour. So I think I'm going to have to have you come back, not today, but you know, future future episode um, after you've had that experience. So, sure. uh, so thank you so much for sharing. Um, your enthusiasm and your passion for what you do is just very, very evident. And um, and again, you're 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 bringing you're bringing more people into the circle. And uh, you know, kudos for that. Oh, Liz, thank you so much for having me. This is the start of many great journeys uh, for us as well. Thank you. Thank you. Join me again for another edition of Connecting the Dots. And receiving counsel based on the facts and circumstances of a particular transaction. To contact Lizbeth, email her at lizbeth at elizabethlmuscat.com or call her office at 508-753-7681. We're online at connectingthedots.lawyer. Executive Producers, Lizbeth Miska and Jack Peacock. Producer, John Medbury and Bill Hamilton. A production of Elizabeth L. Miska, J.D., L.L.M., in association with compliments.